Hey, it's Chris Dancy here, and I am always getting asked about all the different Airtable apps I've built over the years. A lot of times about my main Airtable app, and then of course I've built a collection of amazing applications that have helped all sorts of people, small businesses and communities. Today, for the first time, in association with Airtable, I'm going to give you a quick overview of all the systems I've built. Most importantly, you're going to see that the systems I design fall in five different categories. With that, I'm excited to show you what I call heart-centered apps. So let's show some examples of heart-centered apps right now. Know yourself, support another, empower others, connect communities, or elevate the marginalized. I actually have developed one of every one of these. So the first one I'm going to talk about today is Know Yourself. I went from being single from 2014 until 2018 to getting married. See, I took all the things I learned about my life and decided to say, what would be different if I were to start over? The challenge with Daretable is how do I make my entire life easy to understand, as easy as a simple picture, but more than anything, make sure that the things that are important to me are the things I'm focusing on. Because that means I needed something to actually help me decide moment to moment how I would spend my time. See, I don't save time. I spend it right the first time. And it's a fundamentally different way to think because how you make decisions to moment to moment come from a set of things inside you we call values. Values drive what you're doing. Priorities can, can direct your attention, but they don't drive your decisions. So I had to sit down and kind of map out my whole life and my partner's life. Challenge was I knew that life would have some ups and downs. Now, some of you might not have heard of the Holmes Raw Life Stress Inventory, but, but this is a simple test that anyone can take on the internet. But what it'll tell you very quickly is if you're probably going to have significant problems in your life, you'll see that at 300 points or more, 80% will have a health breakdown. So the five things we kind of looked at were health, home, relationships, job, finance, and death. So from there, I went ahead and built these tables in my air table. And these tables really were going to be focused on all the ways we would get to know ourselves and each other, but also be able to help and focus on people and what we were doing. The first table I build in every heart-centered app is a table of our tables. The second thing was we had to take all of those tables then, we had to think about what are the processes in our lives? Like we have assets we own, we have revenue that we make from our jobs, we have plans that we're making, we have record keeping we need to do. Where do these tables live? And understanding that helped us start to fundamentally shape out what was important. And last but not least, we had to build the system itself. So the first part of the system we called Value Kit. And Value Kit held us, our family, all of our pets and businesses, our actual values. So we actually define those, put guardrails in. So now when there's an automation, it goes against the value. Certain things don't trigger if value isn't been set because if it's not aligned to your value, it probably shouldn't happen. And that could be everything from how you spend your money to how you spend your time to what emails you answer or don't answer, health and even timeline. The next system we built was Task Kit. So that system was super important to help us understand what we were going to focus on what goals we were going to set, what tasks. The next system was called Money Kit. That included the people in our lives, the organizations we worked with, our financial accounts, our bills, our transactions. There's lots of applications to sync these types of things. The next one was called Asset Kit, which had our documents, our physical assets, where they're kept, the apps we use. Business Kit, which had our two works and businesses, all the different things we needed to run that. And then these kits and tables actually started helping us by stringing them together and running our life through them. So if you think about a new customer, if you're a small business, there's ways that that works through the process. If you think about shots for your dog, there's ways that works. So Sunny's the entity, the task is quarterly or yearly vet shots. The people would be the vet, the organization would be the organization's vet and the health of the updated health record. So as you can see, it gave us a way to to string these things together. First major update to Heart Centered Apps, integrate it with our friends and family and our calendars. So we created a form where our friends and family could fill out this form at any point and, and put in their favorite memory of us. Like maybe we all went out. Think of it as like a survey, but for the people you love. And we'd all be able to collectively record those types of things. We also then made this template of our timeline available to any of our friends or family in a calendar feed where we could start to see yearly the things that our, our family had done and participated in. Just really beautiful and lovely. We then built a map where all of these forms could actually be visualized. In 2020, we did our first family dashboard where we could actually come in and click on these important memories for our family, but more importantly, see the types of things that we all were working on. So we just weren't in our own kind of applications and silos. By 2021, I rolled out dashboards to my providers. So my doctor, my lawyer, my CPA, they all had their own portals into my life. And then finally, step four was actually making all this visible on a new website that people can browse that are close to me. This was remarkable 
remarkable because it allowed us all to finally come around and talk about what was important with our apps. The system has been amazing since 2018, it allowed me to build Caretable. And so let's talk about the next one. As you know, losing your job can be scary. And I found a lot of people in my life over the pandemic were losing jobs. So I thought to myself, well, I've done a really good job at helping me. That's phase one. How could I help someone else? So I built something called Flare Table. So Flare Table is the system that I built and I create a portal for people to be able to share their work. My first customer is probably Molly Kane. So Molly is an amazing person. She's got such a robust history, but Molly, like a lot of us, she's a rebel. She doesn't maybe do the best job of making like her values and what she does for businesses front and center for people. So what we did with Molly was we went ahead and said, how do we make Molly's career upfront? So we wanted to create a front end web portal that was also our portfolio. So what we did, again, using Pori and Airtable and Miro and all the other tools, we created this great robust front end for Molly where she could manage her entire career Airtable. She could put the current project she's working on, but more importantly, she could come in here and see her career and log anything out. So when I say log anything out, this is where I think Flare Table really made a huge difference for her. Because what we did was we created a form called the accountability engine. So what this is, is it gave Molly the ability anytime anyone said or did anything to her that made her uncomfortable to be able to log it. See, I think a lot of times people feel bad, but they have no way of actually dealing with it. Either it's not right in that moment. Now, if you're not safe, get out. But there's no way to really capture it on the moment. And I wanted Flare Table to kind of be your HR department in the world. I'll let you know this. It has been remarkably supportive. Everybody who's used Flare Table and used this function has actually had just phenomenal results. I have one friend of mine named Peggy who has a Flare Table. She was recently let go of a company she was at for almost a decade before she did didn't know what she would do because her flare table is there. She had a job within a week. So we've, we've settled one HR dispute and I've got four people using it full-time right now. So it's super cool. Level two, empower others. So how would you go ahead empowering another? And that's what I call compare table because we're talking about em empowering others. It's really about taking these resources and getting it out. I was asked by the U.S. Army in 2021 to go ahead and help with their resiliency directorate. Now, if you don't know, the U.S. Army and a lot of the armed services have some really big challenges, not the types of challenges you might think of. We're talking about human challenges, whether it be sexual assault, depression, suicide, drug abuse. There are some things that are just so difficult going on in the armed forces. And they came to and they said, Chris, can you help us by doing a presentation and creating some tools for other people? So I knew right away that I had to create something kind of different. And I was like, well, this is much bigger than one person. This is a whole group of people and using resources. How would I even structure something for the U.S. Army that would handle such heavy topics? So I knew it had to be a directory type of listing. I knew people had to be able to submit things to it. And I knew it had to be able to integrate with reviews and comments. So what I did was I built something called the Habit Store. Now the Habit Store is public now. You go to the habitstore.io, I think is the public version of the Habit Store. But the first version of the Habit Store was actually built for the U.S. Army. And what we did with the Habit Store was we allowed people to put their favorite tips, tricks, applications, suggestions, anything they did to deal with certain problems. So if you were feeling anxious and you had an application or a habit or a practice that you could do, you could log it. So it became this real-time, and it is right now, if you go to habitstore.io, this real-time searchable database of feelings. So if you're feeling mad, filter by mad. It would show you all different things that people have suggested. You could say, I'm feeling mad and I need an app. I'm feeling mad and I need a podcast. I'm feeling mad, I need a podcast and a practice. And it gave them this robust, amazing way to get so much more out of their lives. I'm really proud of the Habit Store. I would have never thought of building feelings as a filter into an application, but that's where heart-centered apps really comes into play. Connecting communities, I built ShareTable. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was in Walt Disney World. We were thrown out of Walt Disney World, not because we did anything bad, um, but because they closed the park. On the way home, I didn't want to fly. I was worried about the airline and getting sick. We drove and I built an application coming back. The problem was in my neighborhood where I lived at that point, we were in an older neighborhood. So most of the people in my neighborhood were over 70. They were living alone. It was a really, really, really beautiful neighborhood. But I knew that the pandemic might cause some challenges for us, especially as they were closing stores, as you guys remember from the beginning. So how do I do something different, but now unlike 
unlike the army, allow people to collaborate with, the, with each other. So what we did there was we built a resource directory of everything that people had in the neighborhood. And these could be medical supplies. They could be skills. We had nurses, retired nurses and doctors in the neighborhood. People with skills, people who knew how to fix things. Because for a good two months when we were locked down, we couldn't get people to come and do things, whether it be electrical work. And from this system, we allow the neighborhood to start collecting and supporting each other. People would submit a form and say, I need someone to go grocery shopping, or I need someone to come help me with my dog, or I need someone to come look at my furnace. The neighborhood would then get those alerts. People in the neighborhood would say, I'll come over and help with it. It helped neighbor to neighbor, and it was phenomenal. We really focused on three main areas, making it accessible, making it safe, and giving our neighborhood a culture of preparedness. Because other than the pandemic, we also had problems with floods and other types of things. If you've ever seen some of the problems we have going on in Texas, you know what I'm talking about. But we had really simple, bright forms, so they were easy for people to understand. We had charts and graphs that people could come in and see what was going on. The logging was tied to addresses because everybody's addresses were in the tax records. So if I tied them to maps so that people can kind of see what's going on. We even allowed the local constable, that's what we call the police in, in Texas, to be able to see real-time help. This allowed us to really create kind of an entire neighborhood that helped each other. But more than anything, it allowed us to put a front end on this. So we created an FAQ about our neighborhood, how we help each other and why you would want to live there or not live there. And I believe helped increase the value of the houses. It actually got picked up by Airtable and Nextdoor. It's now, I can't tell you how many continents, I think it's in three different continents, hundreds of cities have, have adopted. Last thing that I'm gonna talk about for heart-centered apps for an example is elevate the marginalized. I was online a couple of years ago and I saw this person share, please book your speakers for, for Black History Month before Black History Month. So I sent her a message privately and I said, hey, what are you doing with this? And she sent me back a message and said, I got a spreadsheet with 20 people in it and I want to be able to match people to speakers uh, for Black History Month. So I wrote her back and said, send me that spreadsheet, set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes later, I sent her back Black speakers. So what Black speakers was, again, was a database and air table with a great front end tied to specific topic areas that people could speak about with an easy button to link to people's profiles or where you could book and get them paid right then and there. I thought this was so easy and so disruptive and it literally took about 20 minutes. We put a front end on it about a day later, which is, this is amazing. And we went ahead and put it out into the world. What Black speakers did was it instantly made not the 20 speakers she had when she, when she handed this to me, but it created in a week over 200 Black speakers. It's now over 2,000 Black speakers, and it's been expanded from Black speakers to Black executives. So again, it was covered by Fortune and Forbes. Again, really simple tools thought about through a lens of shared mutual good and where our values aligned. So hopefully that gave you some really great examples about how you can think about Airtable applications for yourself, for your community, for other people in ways that you might not have thought of before. So hopefully you enjoyed that. As you can see, I love building these types of applications. I find them to be so invigorating in the way that they address challenges within our own lives, the lives of people around us, or the lives of people in our communities. Most importantly, they can really make a difference. If you're someone thinking about building your first app to solve a local problem, a personal problem, or a global problem, don't be afraid. Reach out. I love helping people make these apps, and I love making the world a better place, one connection at a time. Thanks so much.